There's a lot of things that are correlated with lower testosterone or feeling like to have low testosterone. Beta blockers can lead to symptoms. The less beta-1 selective, the more likely this is to happen. Beta-1 is heavily concentrated in the heart. Nabivalol, especially at low doses, is the most beta selective if somebody has to be on a beta blocker. Of course, there's some conditions like congestive heart failure where you need specific beta blockers. Next is opiates, even buprenorphine, which is a partial agonist, can increase prolactin quite a bit. Smoked nicotine does not decrease testosterone. In fact, some studies actually show that it increases a little bit, so don't take that sound bite out of context. But there's a lot of overlapping side effects. So if you're trying to optimize your testosterone, and whether this is natural or via HRT, you want to minimize nicotine exposure. Another way to think about this is take one specific side effect, high thromboxane A2 activity. That's basically where your platelets are very sticky. Even if you have a normal, mid-normal testosterone level, male or female, and then you chemically castrate them, we know this from prostate cancer studies where they have to be chemically castrated, then your platelets are much less sticky. So more likely to bleed, but less likely to clot, actually. You want to facilitate as much natural hormone optimization as possible. Some people also have been use, utilizing nicotine a lot as a nootropic, like the Zin, but there's only, there, I think the lowest dose of Zin in the United States is three milligrams. So it's hard to estimate what the lowest safe dose is. Maybe something like one milligram a day, which would be very difficult to get with what we currently have. And also I do see the slippery slope fail pretty frequently. Smoke THC often increases prolactin. A lot of times with pubertal gynecomastia, even though it's unilateral, a lot of times you'll see smoked THC and also DHEA supplements contribute to this. A lot of times in males, DHEA leads to a lot of estrogen production. Alcohol also increases aromatase, that is dose dependent. It's also calorically dense. We've kind of chatted about metabolic syndrome a lot this weekend. It's very common. And this is just to say that this is, should be the first thing that you look at, which everybody's on board of. Because they included dyslipidemia the previous slide, and I know they send these slides out to people, I included their diagnostic criteria, which does include dyslipidemia, because there's obviously people that are metabolically healthy with higher non-HDL cholesterols, so that's just FYI. Still in the middle level of the iceberg, we'll talk more specifically about bioidentical and non-bioidentical HRT, and then also some people were surprised to see that females also have testosterone. I can't remember what context this was in, but somebody posted a response on one of my social media accounts about asking her 